What's going on YouTube? V here. So I say it all the time, but I really mean it. And here's a great example of it. Every format, uh, it says Sekka's Frog's Murmurs because he runs like Swap Frogs and Sekka's Light. But Murmurs just come out of nowhere and just slap a regionals. It always happens. It has never failed. I think ever since this deck has came out, Every format where everyone's scr scrambling to figure out what they want to play or what's the best deck or I'm going to get rid of this deck because the, the next ban list and I'm going to do this. Every time this happens, Marmos is coming out of nowhere and just slap some random fucking place. And 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 I noticed it's always been, it hasn't been like, like you could argue it's been at a bad place. Um, it's been at a good place. No, this literally is in Texas. They're pretty good at their, in Yugi out there in Texas. And, and I remember, I'm telling you, like, it'll, it'll take like, a random place like California or like a New York. It just randomly does it with Murmurs. I don't understand how this works, but yeah, Murmurs, fellas. Um, I'm next Legend Hero decks are finally out. Um, I think they're finally out. I think well, it's the end of the week they'll come out or whatever. Um, they're about $30 MSRP. You get them over here for $28, shipping included. If you really want to buy online or be a dick and not support your LGS. But look at the cards. I'm not seeing the value. I'm seeing great reprint value, which I love in, in these Legend Hero decks, but I'm not seeing the value as far as what is like like what can be really good what's a chaser card i don't see that uh we're seeing assassin sky dragon being one of the highest priced cards it's about five dollars up next you got rusty Bar bardish um is about, okay he's about eight to nines okay this i guess i guess that kind of counts uh common shadow miss is about four dollars <laughs> Uh, Gilleveig, the note I sent is about almost four dollars. Dante's uh, about three and a half, almost four dollars. I guarantee his card be hitting four dollars. It's look at these walls though 34, 21, 30. That's a lot of walls. Um, Malicious is stuck at threes. Twin is a, a three dollar ultra rare, which I don't know why. Like, why make this an ultra rare? It doesn't really matter. We have secret rare twin twisters, they're extra. It's four dollars for secret rare twin twisters. I don't know why anyone want an ultra rare. And then you got the rest of the Yu Gi Oh cards. Up in here, I mean, th some of them are, are starting to go high in value, but a lot of stores are cracking these and selling these. This is what the, sh I mean, you can see right here. I mean, no one's blind. Um, look at that, you know, once again, we're not blind up to this kind of bullshit, but whatever. Um, Levia being a $3 card, Bezos being about twos. Nothing really crazy, like I said, guys. This card kind of needed a reprint for those random samurai players. Um, and that's really, I mean, common malicious twos. Eh. That's hilarious. Right there. That's hilarious. Anyway, um, Legend Hero decks will be finally out. What I think about them is they're good for new players. They're good for players that want to play older decks and now have easier access to them. As well as um, a lot of great reprints. Once again, Dante Comet is an excellent reprint. Uh, a malicious excellent reprint. Rusty Bardish, I guess. I mean, that's a fan Link Monster. That's kind of cool. All right, so Magical Midfield Break is the card that was a common, came out in Dark Illusions, also came out in the Megatons that year as well, right? Yeah, 2017 Megatons. Uh, it's about a dollar for this common card. So if you have this in a quarter box, they're dollars. That's pretty interesting to see. The price is starting to go down, though, because I think, in my opinion, I think Gokis are starting to go down. Now, the deck is bad. It's just that everyone's been playing... If you've been playing Gokis forever, you know what you need to do. It's a deck that literally goes, okay, I need to open up... Uh, 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 Goki Field Lock or Gumbler Combo. Those are your two options. You're not really trying to play Yu-Gi-Oh! as much as you're trying to establish a board. I think that that deck... I mean, I, 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 that's what it is with me with Gokis. When I played Gokis, I got bored of that deck really easily. I just didn't care about it, to be honest with you. It was a fun deck. It just... It, it was just boring. Um, and I think a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh! players might be feeling that. But this is still a great card, Magical Midfield Breaker. Definitely good against stopping hand traps, uh, infinite apartments, and all that jazz. Uh, I'm next, Goat Sark. Now, we're not talking about the two Shonen Jump Goat Sark. That's like $25. No, no, no. We're talking about the Goat Series 2009 Goat Sark. That's about $33 to $35 for this Goat Sarcophagus. This card price was increasing yesterday, hitting a price point of around $20 yesterday, and still moving higher and higher and higher. And now we're seeing 2009 Goat Sark hit about $32 for this card. Looking at the regular Super Rare, well, that's going to run you about $10 for a Super Rare that came on the Special Edition of Duet Lewis Revolution of... Uh, Knights of the Round Table Gold Sox about a, a solid fives. Um, you got the Duelist League promos, which are just more sporadic. Um, the Ultra Red Gold Sark, uh, they're holding about $3, so that I guarantee that's going to be going to board off soon. I mean, the prices are going lower than that one. The Premium Sh Infinite Shit Gold Sark is almost about $5 as well. And after that one sells, it hits about $8 for pr that version. Um, looking at page two, they got the comments are about $3. Uh, you can see why we hit 2 to $3 over here all day long. 
And yeah, Faratar promo is ultra rare. It's all sold out, unfortunately. It's beautiful ultra rare, by the way. Um, up next, let's talk about D-Barriers. So, I'm not crazy about Thunder Dragon. To be honest with you, I, I think they're going to be a great deck. I just don't think they're going to be a key to finding deck that wouldn't want me to switch off my Ultra Guys, which I'm currently playing right now. It's up to you as far as what deck you're playing. But, uh, yeah, it's up to you as far as that. Do you want to get rid of your deck and go Thunder Dragon route or whatever it is? Nevertheless, Soul Fusion really emphasizes Fusion. It's in the name. So, I'm looking at D-Barriers, and they're kind of creeping up very, very, very slowly. Now, before we look at this uh, um, Invasion of Vengeance of uh, Secret Rare, which is the original print, the commons are about a dollar. That's, okay, sure, it's always been about a dollar. The Megatons are about four dollars, guys, about 12 of them, by the way. Four dollars for the Megaton Secret Rares. The Invasion Vengeance showing to be three and change. Price chance showing to move up in value. Unlimited all day longer, roughly around four dollars. Uh, finding a first edition version, it's about six dollars. After that one's gone, though, let's see what else we got over here. They're going to be pretty steady around six, almost to seven dollars for a dimensional barrier. This card literally says if, if Thunder Dragons are good, then I'm going to be a money card. Like, I'm just sitting back looking at everybody going... You do know Thunder Dragons are even kind of decent. If they make a tier, if they they make their way up to tier one with the other decks out there, Goki, Strikers, Ultra Guys, the rest of the decks out there that I haven't even mentioned are our tier one decks. If it makes up to that rank, D Barrier is easily going to spike up in value. If if, if Thunder Dragons make it to like a strong tier one, I'm talking about blowing out a lot of decks. They are the best deck in a meta kind of tier one, which Strikers currently is. But Thunder Dragons have a pretty, a pretty decent matchup against that, if not good. Um, if they are the best deck in the meta, this card's making its way to a higher value. I'm gonna speculate, just throwing it out there. D Barriers probably hit about twenty dollars first edition. Uh, Unlimited's gonna probably run you about fifteens. Uh, looking at D Barriers first editions over here, they'll probably hit about fifteens. This probably hit about fives. That's my speculation. Of D bar, so I'm thinking it's gonna go. It might even go higher for the commons. It might even hit eights at that point. Um, that's if Thunder Dragons can prove to be good. I'm um, next blue or dragon blue dragon value. Blah. I'm not crazy. I know like they're releasing like this rose bullshit arch type, and everyone's like, oh my god, it's so good. I don't think blue or dragon really is that good of a card to be honest with you. Uh, I don't think that the new Archive should make it to be that good of a card. This is hype prices, my friends. So if you have a blue or dragon on limited ten dollars. First edition is 15. Sell this card. It's useless. It's literally a useless card. Uh, Legendary Flighty Super Rare is going to be run you, run you around 2 bucks. Whoop -woo. Actually, no. Let you play it. 4 bucks. Yay. $4. It, it, it's, it's just silly. This is pure hype. Based off a set that we're going to be getting, what, during Savage Strike or after Savage Strike? Can I just throw something out there? Nobody cares about that stuff. Savage Strike is going to be an amazing set. Soul Fusion looks to be a good set. I don't think those rose cards mean nothing, in my opinion. I just don't. I'm not. I'm not crazy about them. I'm um, next Black Garden, still holding a dominant, dominant, dominant price point in the market price. Looking at the secret rares, they're about nine dollars uh, higher than the six dollar market price. Um, the super rares, which are twos, the unlimited version is going to be holding also around six dollar market price. The commons are about like six dollars, so check your quarter boxes for that one, fellas. And the the regular rares is only uh, um a moderate play, and that's really it. So, yeah, Black Garden. Sell? <laughs> Let's talk about Savage Strike quickly. Because the rumor is, if, if, if Soul Fusions is for Fusions, Savage Strike will be for Synchros. And if that's the case, I'm not sure if anyone knows what this guy is. Mechlord Emperor Grano. Now, the reason I'm specifically talking about this card, because this card came out literally at the very tippity top of the end of when singles are being played. This card literally came out, and like a week later, we went and ran to Exceed format. That much. And it went super duper under the radar. I have a ton of these. I bought, I held, I didn't tell nobody. Because one day, maybe Synchros become a thing again. Maybe the effect. It cannot be normal summon a set. Uh, this card cannot be special summon except by its own effect. When a face of monster control is destroyed by a card effect and sent to the graveyard, you can special summon this card from your hand. This card gains attack and defense equal to half of your life points. Once per turn, you can select one synchro monster your opponent controls and equip it to this card. This card gains attack equal to the equip monster's combined attack. During your main phase, you can select one of those equip monsters and put it on your side of the field in face of defense position. The show and drop uh, versions of Granules are... Where are they? Yeah, 29 cents. This one over here is 25. Yeah, so... Once again, it's, it's kind of like D-Bar with um, Soul Fusion. It's like, yeah, real quickly... If none of this is hit on the ban list, if none of this is touched for D barriers with Soul Fusion, it works with Soul Fusion. Granol is gonna work with Savage Strike. 
It's simple. The card's dirty right now. I'm not saying it's gonna be the be all end all card, but if you're playing a deck like, uh, if you're playing against like Dracos, can you destroy your card? Can you win your card effects to struggling with monsters? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can easily. This card might most likely would be a side deck card, though. Would not be making its way to main. Now, unless Savage Strike has like a tier zero synchro exclusive deck, the best deck in the world, then maybe, but for the most part, no, not really. Uh, Alistair, Aliester, the Invoker Madness. Gorgeous Arbic. I keep saying it because I love the Arbic in this card so much, but its price is consistently too tank down. I keep saying to everybody that has th these cards, I, I invoke players. Are, are, they're not like crazy hero plays where it's like, that's his hero. It's ulti common. Vanilla, 100 attack, 100 defense. $45? Okay, do you have three? Okay, I'll take six. Like, it's not insane like hero players. Uh, but but invoker players are very, very loyal to invoked. They're, 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 everything, it's like, it's like, they're like, invoked. This is my invoked. New deck coming out. Can it work with my invoked? I get the fuck out of here. Can you, do you work with invoked? I accidentally hit the mute button. What I'm trying to say is, Invoked players are batshit crazy when it comes down to choosing something other than Invoked. It's really hard. It, 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 it's, it's like a heroin addict going, you should really try drinking water. It's healthy for you. And I'm going, no, man. That heroin's really good right about now. If water doesn't work on heroin, fuck water. I just need the heroin. That's what it is with about Invoked players. They're crazy. Go to your locals. Ask them. Ask the regular Invoked kid. Hey, Invoked kid at locals, because everyone locals has one of those. At least one of those. Can you not play that deck by something else? They'll look at you like, what is Yu-Gi-Oh? I play Invoked. I play the game Invoked. I'm sorry I'm going off on a tangent, but I just have a lot of personal experience with my friends who play Invoked. And I'm like, play something else. And they're like, what game? What? No. I play Invoked featuring Yu-Gi-Oh. Anyway. God, that was a tangent. I didn't mean to do that. But I, I just, oh, God. And if you had the same kind of Invoked people, please comment below. Because Aliester and Invoker Madness, literally, and Invoked variants have done shit in the Yu-Gi-Oh meta. And it's frustrating to he see these prices still be high. It's frustrating to see Invoked players still go, you know, we, we, we into the, we, we, we're going to be good. We're going to be good. We're into the next set. We're going to be good. We're gonna, we got this. We got, and just get fucking demolished every event. And you're like, guys, play something else. <laughs> At least Hero Players won't play their shitty decks. They'll acknowledge the deck is trash. They just want to buy it. Anyway, uh, price points are about fifteen dollars. It's sixteen dollars. Yes, yeah, so the price speculation of this card, it's gonna fall to eight dollars. That fast. You might want to pull out now. You should have pulled out when it was thirty. Should have pulled out when it was twenty. You need to pull out now. Super Quantum Mecha Great. Me King, uh, Super Quantum. Super Quantal. Super Quantal Mech King Great Magnus. Does it have to be that long a name? Super Quano, Great Magnus. We, we don't care about... Anyway. Um, the price range going to go higher in value. The price is that, uh, normally is $8. But look at over here. About $13 to $14. Ain't that, ain't that crazy. Only came out in Wing Raiders as a secret rare. Cards gorgeous artwork. Probably has some future support. If it is, please comment below. I'd love to know. Um, Aaron's Mage Jasmine is going down in value. Market price showing to be about $15. And hey, look at that. $15. Aaron's Mage Jasmine being another card that... Obviously, it's going to be good when we get the Plant Link Monster one day this year soon, hopefully coming. I, I'm just hoping that Link Monster isn't like Fight for Patchwork. I'm hoping that we get um, our mage, the new Iron Mage Links in, in this set or hopefully as soon. No sooner than Savage Strike. I, I think that um, the Plant Links is going to be a really fun deck, a, a really... Uh, uh, a deck that can make its, you know, a board combo, like, right, like, kind of like how Gokis are, but if it has to play Yu-Gi-Oh, it can play Yu-Gi-Oh, that's what I like about the plant deck a lot, I think it's a really fun deck that has those kind of, that kind of interactivity, uh, with the players, and I, and whether you're playing against it or you're playing with it, and I, normally, I just really bias because I fucking love plants, I love the breed plants, if anyone will play that as well, so yeah, $15, hopefully, this does get a reprint soon, because Secret Red Jasmine's are 15 that's insane for this card's price, it should not be that high, hopefully, we'll get a reprint, probably like Super Rare. Cosmo, so much Cosmo for a minute there. Dr. Shroy was holding a $20 price point, and look at it right now, it's starting to go lower. But it's going lower slowly, and that's only because we're seeing the new November ban is coming out soon. So every Cosmo player is like, three destroyers? Three destroyers? That's what they want. But the thing is, if we had the three destroyers, it means nothing still, because we don't have E-Telly. If we get E-Telly back, if we get E-Telly, if Cosmo Destroyers was at two, and E-Telly came to three, this deck would be tier one today. That's how strong Emergency Teleport is, for anyone that wants to know what E-Telly means. Emergency Teleport. 
Um, unfortunately, that's not the case, and even though Destroyer is a great card, it is going down in value. It's trying to hold, maintain a $19 price point, where it was once 20 I think even after the ban list come November, it will continue to decline in value. And then we'll talk about it when it's around 8000 buy it up again, and when speculation happens, so can we sell it, make money. Uh, Cosmojo's on a card that was pretty high in value, and currently to the market price trend, it's still a high in value. It's like $13 for Cosmojo, and to be honest with you, I like this card a lot. It's just that, once again, Cosmos aren't doing nothing. This needs to go down in value. Tin Can will go down in value as well. It's currently around $11 price point. If Cosmos do nothing, Tin Can cannot maintain its price point. It's impossible. But V, this one guy in Topeka, Kansas, top with Cosmos. Fuck that one guy, is what I say. Because unless this is sort of dominant showing, these prices don't stick. It doesn't work this way. They don't, they don't. They don't work like that. <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh! Is a, I get that a lot in my in a lot of my comment section, my videos, or so people will P, uh, PM me. V, I saw your video today, and I just want to say great videos. But uh, but my friend who played Cosmos at Locals made top four at Cosmos. F no, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Really? Your one friend did it? Then I guess the prices are spiking. No, this is how it works. The deck needs to show a dominant topping in multiple regional Yu-Gi-Oh! events, or in other types of Yu-Gi-Oh! events that are high tier. If it continues to do that, the price point will stabilize if not increase in value, but most importantly, will stabilize due to the fact that the deck has not shown any, any, any topping. It means nothing. These prices will go down in value. <laughs> Dark Lizard being a $7 card. Yeah, that's going to hit about sixes. Dark Lady's about going to be four soon. The fact that she's $10 is not only laughable, but kind of sad for anyone who buys her at 10 Straw Man, $3. You know what? I agree with this price. That's pretty good. This card should be a nickel at its best day. Okay. Um, Mega Phantom Beast Dragon Sack is another card that no one's looking at. Came out low attacking on Galaxy, also 2014 Mega Pack. Got bought out uh, a couple of months ago, and everyone's like, what the hell? And um, slowly went back down. Now we're looking at Mega Phantom Beast Dragon Sack, currently around $10 for the first edition that you played of LTGY. The Megaton version being about $8 to $9 for Mega Phantom Beast Dragon Sack. I love saying that name. I love saying it. I'm sorry. I just, Mega Phantom Beast Dragon Sack. I love saying it. Anyway. Why is this important, V? Well, you see, I think that the next thing in Yu-Gi-Oh! is going to be bringing out cards like this one. Um, and I think it's going to be really good, it, and I think this card will go up in value due to the fact that if Harpy's showing any prevalence or any deck showing any prevalence, we might see both Mecha Fetterby Shekel Sack as well as number 42, Gassy Tomahawk, actually see meta play. And if that is the case, then they can make some pretty crazy link combos. Mecha Fetterby Shekel Sack can also... Pop a card in your opponent's side of the field, as well as going to a link for two level seven. So it has a little bit more stability. If you want to go against Tomahawk, you can obviously easily spam the field. So that's a lot of cool things it could do, and I really like that a lot. And I think that this card might go up in value. Mega Man and Beast Chuck Attack. Okay, uh, High Priestess of Prophecy also is high in price. Uh, look at the Return of the Duelist. I mean, this kind of always has been pretty expensive, but look at the market price. It's about twelve dollars. Price is showing it going up in value. Our limit's about thirteen, actually. Uh, Light plate's gonna be about twenty dollars for first edition of the Secret Rare High Priest of Prophecy. She also came out Ultra Rare and Battle Pack Two Water Giants. And if you're thinking, wow, I didn't know she came out Ultra Rare, you're not alone. Literally, nobody cared about Battle Packs. At all. If any idiot out there says that there's battle packs, there were a Konami's attempt at drafting Yu-Gi-Oh! And it failed miserably. It failed tremendously. And the only time you'll hear people say, I really like it, is when talking to a Konami rep, one in particular, who says, I thought it was a good idea, and it was my idea. And they're all like, I thought it was a good idea, too. No, drafting yu gi is an idiotic idea. And the fact that Battle Pack 2 Water Giants has a good card is shocking to many people, including myself. It is going up in price trends. Market price showing to be about a $10 card. We look over here, it's about 11. It's not many in the market. It bombs out only around like 15 to 16 dollars for the Ultra Rare, but yeah, it's pretty impressive. Also, the Ultra Rare version of High Priest of Prophecy looks pretty nice. Once again, let's see what's in Battle Pack 2. It's just, oh, this is so, so bad. This is so bad, and all those other kind of special packs are so bad. When you buy those uh, uh, Walmart boxes, the mystery boxes, you'll see like these crappy packs as well as other like the old school draft packs in them. It's, it's, they, they have so much, so, so much at Konami HQ. A lot of great utility cards, just, you know, for investing, no, look at an Ultra Rare, um, Big Eye. Eh, I'm not, I'm not crazy about the Ultra Rare, because the Secret Rare looks infinitely better, and on top of the Secret Rare, we have an Ultimate, Ultimate Rare Big Eye, which is about $14. Another card that's a rank 7, just want to talk about real quickly, guys. That's why this one never took, took any, any shape as far as price valuation. Had there been no, uh, Big Eye ulti, it'd probably show, a, a, a roughly near the, uh, Galactic Overlord price. By the way, ultis are, like, 13 or 14s. Why don't you have one? Everyone should have one of these. The card's amazing. 
Fable Soulkiss is another card that came out in Dual Terminal 3. It's about $8. The Battle Pack 2 Super Rares are about $7. The Secret Rares are in the Arsenal also around $8. Yes, um, high to low, right? High to low, TG player? Thank you. Okay. Great, great website. I cannot wait for another compar comparison website to, to like. I want a comparison website kind of like TG player that, and this can be me being greedy, has like affiliate link so I can like make money doing this. Just doing like even more. And with the money, I'm gonna buy more Yu Gi Oh cards, so it's a never ending system. It's just, it's, it's, it's like being, <laughs> it's like being a guy goes, Hey, you wanna do crack? And I go, Yeah. And you go, Okay. And then the crack dealer goes, Here's a piece for you. That's it. And I go, oh, All right. Mm, great. And I'll do that nonstop and don't eat. <laughs> anyway, um, look at that favorite soul because obviously it's because of the Burning Abyss. Everyone's getting really excited. Getting behind this card to you like for Burning Abyss. If you're like me and you bought DT3 Fable Soul Kiss for a dollar and change, now's the time you might wanna sell it. Uh, looking at the super. Ra no, I didn't click on that. Idiotic site. Uh, looking at the for the Arsenal three soul kits, which have like eight of these. Yeah, they're eight dollars. Ironically, same price. Um, sell these. You want to sell these as fast as possible. I know I already got rid of a bunch of mines. Um, Battle Fatal Ultimate Rare is another card that it's it's pretty high in value and ain't me. Um, my card showing to be about eight to nine dollars price and showing to be stable as as a valuation in its card. Unlimited Lightning Play is gonna run you about seven dollars for this card. Uh, looking at a first edition version of this card. It's going to be about $8. So, yeah, it's kind of maintaining value to my Rare Battle Fader. I always loved this card. I always thought this card should maintain value. If you want my honest opinion about Battle Fader, I think it's going to go up in the future. Um, I have about, I think, five of these. I need to get more of these. So I'm going to slowly collect Battle Faders, Ultimate Rare First Editions. Um, I have some foreign, foreign ones as well. And the reason why, because I've always felt like this card's going to have a place in the meta in the future. And you might have a certain Yu-Gi-Oh card you do that with as well. Or, or maybe a couple of cards. I know I have tons of cards. I look at that and I go, this card's horrible right now. I'll agree with anyone on that. But in the future, absolutely this card will show, you know, have uh, uh, have a play in it. Have have a, a spot. And I think that Battle Fader might be one of those cards. Uh, up next, Machine Duplication. I love this card. Because I love, I talked about this card when it was $6. I yelled about it when it was 8 to $10. And now the market price is showing to be $21. Price is showing increasing in value. We're on page two, just to show you our unlimited version, which is around nineteen dollars for this card. Uh, first edition version is gonna run you about eh, twenty dollars. The price points are still a little bit close for my taste, but still, machine dupes are now twenty dollars. Damn. Uh, up next, instant fusion. The card I said to pull out at twenty five. I I really didn't feel comfortable with this card, and I said to pull out around twenty five. I got rid of mine so it was around I think twenty eight to thirties because it moved up relatively fast. I just, I got I got quick cash for it. But look at the price trends. It slowly moved up. Now it's stabilizing. Look at the market price showing to be about $35. See over here, guys? It's about $37 for uh, Instant Fusion. And I still don't feel comfortable with this card. I still don't like this card. And anyone go, well, but V, but that deck. But, but V, the, this deck. you got to realize, this card has been around since it made Zodiac even that much more broken. Konami decided to hit Norden. And then later on, we see this card come out of nowhere in the meta. Over again, over again, over again. Making decent decks a little bit more busted by playing cards like Institution. Currently, right now, Goki's kind of play this card. And other decks will... Oh, well, Goki's used to play this card when he used to go into Invoker. But even, nevertheless, this card is just finds its way into decks and makes them good. Like, why is this card banned? I don't... It blows my mind. Because this card's been in every, like, top-tier meta deck that has been, had a huge ban hammer hit on it. But somehow, this card just squeaks by. It's the tricksters of the non... Uh, um. The, the non like meta themed decks like like Konami's like we'll hit some Goki stuff we'll hit that invoke card and the future's like yes continue continue don't, don't don't hit me like it's been going on since Zodiac like you go bring Norton back to five who cares if Institution's hit it doesn't matter anyway Great Keeper Commandant is another card that price is showing it went down but more more or less stabilizing we've seen about a fifteen dollar market price on limited limits about twenty five first editions also about twenty six dollars. This card is being bought out quickly. Beautiful ultimate rare, by the way. And look at Nucker Valley. This is in Great Cubers in general. Um, it's actually starting to move up in value. Market price showing to be about $23. And we're seeing roughly around $23. After those two sell, it'll be about $25. Great Cubers is another deck that I just really want to end this video on. Because I really want to emphasize the fact that a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh players are focused on all these other decks. All these futuristic decks. And, and, and Great Cubers is like, oh, that's awesome. That's great. They all use a graveyard. Who cares? Like, Nucker Valley literally does not care. And, this, and Great Keepers are getting more support. That's what I don't understand. Like, what a lot of you can play is talk, talk, asking me about this future deck and that future deck. And in my back of my mind, I have to keep in track of Great Keepers. Because this deck is a, a savage. This deck is still phenomenal. And even though, like, Ultra Guys, this is 
arguably the better control deck. It's what it does. It's literally how deck was originally made to do. And I don't know much about the new support, but if it's even remotely decent, we might actually see Gravekeepers become a tier one deck. And that's a real serious thought that you have to do moving forward by playing Yu-Gi-Oh! Whether it's this meta, the next meta with Soul Fusions, or the Savage Strike meta. This is a deck that is very, very good at locking you out of your graveyard while, con while constantly manipulating uh, their own field. And they have a lot of dumb cards to it, like um, this one over here, Imperial Tomb. Yeah, it's just, if you have you have Necro Valley, your Grave Cube Monster, which the deck always does, cool, negate everything. Cards at three, Count Trap. Uh, price is currently dropping down a little bit, about five and change, but that's only a 2014 Mega Pack. The, the Secret Rare is uh, roughly around $6, which is still relatively cheap. Love the artwork, by the way. I think I just think that Great Keepers is a, is a deck that people got to seriously focus on. A lot of you can play is don't because they're focused on Thunder Dragons, Thunder Dragons, Thunder Dragons. Does that affect my Sky Strikers, my Gokis, my Ultra Guys? But like, dude, focus Great Keepers. That deck is fucking scary. Anyway, guys, that's what I want to say. I really appreciate you guys watching with Marco Watch. Um, please make sure to hit the like button. Uh, comment below. I read every single one of your comments. I really greatly appreciate it. And uh, yeah, thanks, guys. I really appreciate you guys watching. Make sure to subscribe. It's your boy V. Guys, have a good day.